、えー、はじめまして、横浜市から参りました国吉と申します。えー、私は、えー、1971年から横浜市で福祉内閣活動を行ってきました。えー、まあ、本日は、えー、その、えー、全体の流れをですね、2002年までと2002年以降の、えー、変化みたいな対応の変化。こういったものについて、えー、スライドをお見せしながらご説明します。えー、横浜の歴史ですね。で、今年の歴史、千九百五十、千八百五十九年に、まあ、都市がスタートしております。で、えー、外国人居留地のあった都市でございます。しかし。関東大震災、1923年の関東大震災によって破壊されました。また、都市は何回も拡張して、現在、落第な都市になっております。また、第二次世界大戦で物資を受けて町は全滅しました。その後、長い間、米軍が接収、10年ほど接収いたしました。えー千九百まあ、本日は、えー、ファーストステージとして1971年から2002年までちょっと映像下が切れちゃっているんですが、えー、ということと2002年以降2つに分けて説明したとしますでワンマンは1960年代にですね、えー、いろんな課題が出てきましてそれで、えー、中心部にはまだ米軍が滞在していると。ということで、都市部の活力形成の必要があったり、それから郊外部では、えー、住宅地開発が進んで、これに対する適切なコントロールが必要であったと、まあ、こういうことを受けてですね、えー、横浜は1900あの都市、自律的都市形成に向けた戦略というものを取ろうとしています。自律的都市形成といいますのは、東京に近接しておりますので、東京の衛生都市にならない。自立したコンセプトで経営できるそういったことを目指そうということですねまた政策については必ずしも国の政策に従わず自立した政策を持っていきたいというスタンスがありがとうございますそれで3つの取り組みとしてこの開発の適切なコントロールそれから法的なプロジェクトの推進そして3つ目として都市デザインアーバンデザインという3つの取り組みをました、えー、3つ6つの6大事業といわれるものがこういうものがありましてその中で、えー、アーバン、えー、センター地区のダメですねの、えー、これですね、えー、都市部の取り組みここについて本日はそのずっと経緯をお話ししたいと思います全体をお話しするととても重要なお話しできませんのでセンターについてお話しします、えー、センターについてはあ、えー、自立する都市のために中心部にあります造船所を等の工場地に移転してここに新たな町を作るそして、えーえー、下にあります従来化の都市に合わせて、えー、活力ある都市に移転するこういった緑の軸、グリーンアクシとなりますが、こういったものを気に沿って、町の魅力を整えていくということを打ち出しております。こういった町の中心部が2つあるところの工場を移転して、こういった1つの中心部に形成しますそしてこういった緑の軸線で町を。従来の町を魅力的に整えていくというスタンスこういったものに沿って1970年代と現在はこういうふうに変化してきているわけですでその中の一つとして高速道路の地区が計画されましたこれは、えー、プロデュースは横浜でしたが国の事業として行っておりまして横浜市の政策とは意図とは別に国はこれを全て高架で高架の道路これと同じような高架で計画して着工寸前でしたしかし横浜市夫妻はこれに対して住民とともに反対してですねこれを作られたら町が分断されてしまうということでこれを全部拒否していたわけですねそして本日に
これによってこの地域から高速道路が出るということはなくなったわけですその時国は、えー、横浜市はいつからこんなに偉くなったんだと、えー、国の国が全部お金を出してるんじゃないかとふうにして怒られましたがこれは横浜の町のためであるということで、えー、これを拒否し続けてこれを成功しましたでこういうことを通じて、えー、自立する都市の運営というのを始めたわけですそしてまたこういう大きなプロジェクトに絡みながら都市空間の創造ということも合わせて考えてえー、ここに高速道路を入るというだったんですねこれをやめてこの地面に沿って緑の軸線を行動していくという,う計画を打ち出してこれを実施いたしました現在の姿ですねこれがこういうふうに育ってきているそれからまた小さな、えー、我々は我々1971年に都市デザインチームを作りましたがあその時の、まあ、私ともう一人のスタッフでしたもう一人は8歳ぐらいの年でこの方はボス,トンのあボストン市のアーバンデザインチームにいた方でハーバード大学のアーバンデザインで学んでいるわけですですから私どものアーバンデザインの源流にはアメリカのアーバンデザインがあるんではないかと,ということでアメリカを学ぶということからやっぱりスタートしておりますでこ,うこういったあの歩行者のネットワークですけどこれはまあ当然ボストンのリタムトレイルとかですねそういうことを学んでいったわけですし、こういった広場づくりということ、それから、えー、プラザーボーナス、こういったものはニューヨークのシステムとも学んでいくと、まず学ぶところから始めていくということになっていますまた、こういう商店街の整備等について、えー、地域の方々と共同するということを行いました。それで、えー、私ども、私も建築出身ですが、私どものアイデンティティを全部押し付けるんではなくて、まず地域の方と一緒に、この地域は何を大事にするか、何をこだわっているかということを議論して、地域の方々の誇りに思っていることを尊重しながら、地域の空間を組み立てているというのがベストだというふうに考えております。そして、えー、この中にいくつかの商店街がありますが、こういうふうにありますけれども、それぞれ独自のコンセプト。とルールを持って異なる魅力を作っていくそれが全体として町の多様性を認めるというふうにこう組み立てていくそしてこちらに将来新しい都心ができるわけですからその時に新しい都心と異なる魅力が備わっているように準備しておくというふうにしたわけですでこういうふうにする中で商店街地域の方々も自立して意思を持つということを私としては誘導したかったわけです。そういう地域の力をつけるということに勢力をつ,つ,ついて、彼らが自立して町を運営できるような体力を作っていくというふうに考えたわけです。えー、そして、この商店街ができると、次の商店街が競うように自分たちの考えで、そして次々にこう他の商店街に影響を与えていく、連,連番をしていくと。そして自分たちもお金を出して、自分たちでルールを作って町を運営する。もちろん私はお手伝いするわけですね。アシスト。そしてまた建築家の方にもそれぞれの地域に入ってもらって、それぞれに加わってもらってやっていただくわけですね。また、えー、横浜の歴史資産、第二次世界大戦をくぐ、えー、って、わずかに残っている歴史資産も地域の,あの空間的魅力としてできるだけ活用していくと。それほど素晴らしい永久の。ものではなくて B 級かもしれませんけれども B 級でもこの地域の力を整えるアイデンティティを整えるためには重要だということでまずはこう光を当てるこういった実験から始めてそれで、えー、歴史資産に市民の方々が興味を持つようになるその次にこういった建造物が、えー、壊されるという時に市民と一緒にこのビルのオーナーにお願いしてパサーだけでも残していただくあるいはこれなんかは別のとこから引き出してきムーブして引いていってですねこの高層林の足元に再構築するというようなことなんかもやっていただきましたし外国人が住んでいた住宅地なんかも横浜市が水で受けて保存したりしておりますまた港の倉庫とか工場とかこういったものが、えー、灰色あるいは黒武器見ないよ、暗い色でしたので
地域の公安の関係の方々と議論しましたそしてこういった色彩計画を作ってこれは発電所ですね発電所も楽しく色合いを持ってほしいというふうに誘導しているこういった、えーあのまあ、空間をですね、えー、再構築していって、えー、3つのゾーンこちらのパブリックな状態と緑地そしてあ歴史的建造物背景の一部これをそれぞれ整えてですね、えー、約10年代かかってこういうふうな空間に再生するこの時はここは公園ですねここは道路ですですから公園と道路という境界を取ることによってこういった空間を日本では作っていったわけですねそれから当然ですがこれと合わせてこの色彩を整えるこちらの一群の色彩を整えることによってこの2つの色彩群があるわけですねそれで両方のコントラストを見せるというようなことも誘導しています。これは私ども都市団地には一切お金を持っておりません。他の事業、事業主体、行政内の各局、民間、そういうところにお願いして、これをやっていくんですね。説得ですから、我々はプロデューサーでもあるんですね。まあ、そういうことで、えー、こうすると、港の、これは港の産業遺産、昔、ここは貨物列車が走ってた線路なんですけど、これを活用して、歩行者の、えー、ルートにしております。飛車道という鉄道になったそういうネーミングが今でもついておりますまたこの奥にあるレンガ倉庫ですねこれは、えー、国のものだったんですが横浜市が取得して一つは商業施設と文化施設にしております間はこういったイベントがオクターバーフェストとかですねこういったことになるこれはマラソンを僕らしかするとかです、ね、そういうことになりますまた超高層ビルの足元に昔の造船所のドンをそのまま残していただいてイベントスペースにしてみようこれはこれもお願いですまたこの先にあるホテルにはですね学校ホテル業務ですねトンネル業務の空間を開けていただくというような学校をそしてようやくこの傷の市街地ができた後にですね1980年頃からこの移転が始まってそしてこういった街ができるわけですけれどもこの港未来と呼ばれる地区においても、えー、地権者土地を持っている人たちがという各所共同して町のルールを作ってですねそしてそのこの中を通るペデスティアンのネットワークを作るあるいはスカイラインを魅力的に進めるここは 300m ですよここは 180m ですよというふうなこれはガイドラインに沿ってこういう。なスカイラインを作るといったこともありましたしそしてこの地区は最高 300m で超高層が建つからしかしこのマイクは赤レンガ倉庫を中心として低い建物だけで構成する 45m 以下の地区というふうに構成でこの辺のことはですね先ほど議論していた地域の支援の人たちが横浜のアイデンティティとして港の歴史こういった明治以の外国国からの優越さと文化のある町こういうことを大事にしたいというコンセプトがあってそれが後押しされてそれに後押しされて我々のコンセプトとして打ち出してもですね市民に支持することが示されたわけですつまり市民とのコミュニケーションがあって作られたコンセプトですから市民からも支持されるというとことですねそして新しい町でもこういったルールを作っていくというそして、えー、1971年から2009年ぐらいから入ってですね、コツコツと少しずつ小さなプロジェクトを仕立てていって、えー、2009年にはこの水彩線は全てこうつながっていったんですね、約 3.5km の歴史と未来を感じるプロモラの空間が誕生していくわけですね。そしてこういった歴史建造物と未来的なものが対する間違い。またえー、そしてそういう中でもちろんいろんな建築、クリエイティブな建築も作っていただくということで、この大阪市の国際コンペを行いました。この時は私も企画委員で、えー、コンペの企画をしておりました、企画側ですね。そしてこの時は、ここは20メートル以下にしてくださいと
という概念もそうです。ここに高層ビルが立つと、この町のシルエットが動かされますので、そのガイドラインの中で、ルールの中で、募集要項ですから、コンペの募集要項の中に高さの規定をしていきたいですね。えー、あ後ほどまた写真を撮ってそして、えー、この地区、えー、ですね、この地区では、この明るいな倉庫を保存するということを。ですね、そしてここに歴史の軸を作ってこれからこう歴史の軸を作って赤ライン倉庫を中心にこれがどこからでも見えるようにしようということで高さの規定であるとかこういったビュー,ビューコリドーですね視線の,の通る道を通るのを使ってますそれから当然ですがこのレールを残すと線路のレールを実は当時の主張はですねこのレールは危ないから取れと言ったんですね危険だと滑ったらどうするんだと私が残すべきだと。3回規定されたんですが、えー、とうとう、えー、あの OK してもらいました。あのまあ、こういうことで、えー、非常にご視聴ともですね、えー、大変だったんですけれども、なんとか乗り越えました。また、こういうことを通じている中で,です、ね、で市長が現在まで5人使っているんですけれども、最初の時の市長の時に、えー、は、えー、から次の市長になった時に、全く政党逆の市長になったんですね。それで多くの幹部がこう、まあ、非常に前の市長の時に有能だったのか私の局長の幹部あのリーダーもですね、えー、結局大学に出ていくということで前次の市長からは大臣されなかったんです、まあ、これよくあることですけど、まあ、そういう中で地域の方々が新聞に書いてです、ね、新聞に書こう書いてます新しい市長は都市財チームをもっと大事にすべきだという市長が新聞に書かれてそれで我々地元の後押しを受けてまた次のですね反対の党から出てきた市長我々政治活動してないんですけどそ,そういうふうに見られちゃうんですねそれで、えー、支持されたもんですから次の市長をまた大事にしてくれて今度は都市財チームである都市財産室にこうなることを決めている。いうそういった地域の力によって我々の力も、まあ、維持することができて継続することができるということが言われていますそしてこうやって、えー、元の鉄道線を残してこういったこういうですね、えー、プロムナートにするとこれはアメリカンブリッジカンパニーというところが使ったそれニューヨークの会社が作ったものを持ってきたものですねらしいですねこういったものも大事にしていただいていますそして、えー、こういったトンネルを開けると明かりがすごくが見えるそうすると、ここにサインをつけなくていいわけですね。これがです、ね、こういう、でこういった、レミアスをこう残すと、ちょっと時間がかかます。で、これ、えー、見事に優先されたアダムでございます。ホロさんですね。おめでとうございました。えー、おめでとうございました。<笑>で、あの、えー、あのこういう,もう新しいお金のような形の、全体が建築であり、ランドスケープであるという新しい建築。非常に多くの、えー、久しぶりただ、えー、少しお金がかかったので,です、ね、横浜市の事業協力の方はです、ね、あまり自慢にしないというその、えー、ところがありますけども、まあ、あのベネチア・ビエンナーレでイギリスサイルの代表作品としてイギリスに展示されております。えー、で、えー、こういったですね、流行のお金ありましたこういうふうに、現在でも芝生も実されておりますし、えー、こういったいろんなイベントでも使われています。ここから見た中にあるということで、えー、未来的なもの、歴史的なもの、そして新しいものを織り交ぜていく魅力というので、まあ、横浜、このアイデンティティを示しています。そういう中で、こういった次の2009年にはこういった新しい広場のプロジェクトも、こういう場所を、えー、イノベーションしようという。これもコンペティションで、これは国内インターナショナルじゃなくて、えー、国内のコンペティション、これも若い建築が入選しました。実はこの時はですね、えー、年齢をですね、50歳以下に限るとしたんです。つまりです、ね、若い人にチャンスを与えるということです。それで、有名な日本の建築家は、あの面白くないですからということで、審査員にも入ってたみたいな、伊藤豊洋さんとかですね、そういう方がそういうふうになっておりました。そしてできた、あ、こういった広場ですね。これが以前の状態で、この倉庫に転じて、ここに広場を。そして、そのことによって、この大沢橋とこの造の葉のパークというところがつながって、人の流れがこうスムーズになっている
で、まあ、こういうことが大体条件大事ですけども、次の2002年からですね、これまではですね、横、え、浜、ー、独自の魅力的で人間的な都市空間を作る地域、地域とともに築くということでやってきたんですけども、第二期はですね、そういった使われて、あそういった都市空間があまりきちんと使われてないという指摘もあって、これによって、これをですね、もっと活用していくということとか、それから、あですね、えー、都市活動、むしろですね、空間ではなくて活動を想像するのがこれから大事と。それからもう一つは、新しい領域を開発していく。やっぱり最近ですね、人口問題とか、福祉の問題、高齢者の問題とか、そういうものに対応して都市デザインとか、そういうものを開発していくことも出てきています。そして、まあ、都市空間を活用するというのは、こういったその、えー、カフェテラスを出すというようなですね、ただただ、えー、広いただくような道路を子どもを作るのではなくて、こういったカフェテラスをちゃんと常設するようなこともやっているということですね。あるいは、その文化、芸術、活動によって、創造都市活動によって街を作っていく。こういった歴史的建造物、あるいは古い層ですね、こういったものをですね、アイデンティティとして大事にしつつ、ただ、ただ置いておくだけではなくて、新たな活動の拠点としてこう使っていくということで、若い美術家たちに使っていくようなシステムを始めております。で、この際もですね、その運営は民間に全部お任せする、行政の美術館担当をやるものと、つまんないと。面白くないと、良くないということで、民間団体に手を挙げていただいて、それで運営をやっていただくと、そういうことをしました。またですね、えー、これはまあ新たな取り組みですけども、えー、不法売春の地域があったんですね、250ぐらいの点ぐらいの、ここを一掃しようと、住民がこう立ち上がったんですけども、それをに警察と一緒に反応してですね、まあ、こういった、よく我々はもう人はいけないようなこういった状態の街から、これ全部そうだったんですけども、これ全部一掃しまして、この後はガラーンと入ってしまうわけですけども、ここを横浜市がいくつか借りてですね、ここにアーティストに住んでいただいて、それでアーティストの活動の拠点として、こういった昔の部屋をそのまましながらですね、つまり持ち主はまだいるわけですから、壊せないわけですけども、それを借りながら、アートで街を変えていくと。いうことを言ってもう10年ぐらい経ってですね、それで、えー、非常にこう、えー、昔の怖いイメージが失踪されて、他の年からいろいろ多くの人が集まるような感じ、その中にいろんな建築家にもです、ね、新しい施設を作っていただいて、そして、えー、非常に、えー、文化のイベントがたくさんある、この街があります。またあ、まあ、こういった新しい、まだ、地区の脇にはですね、こういった地区の再開発の計画等もありましてこういうビルを作るときもですね、足元に歴史建造物をちゃんと残すようにこのビルの足元ですねこの足元にはこういうふうに残っておりますこの地区でも再整備が進んでおりますしこの倉庫をなんとか残しているこのビルも残そうここに視聴者も新しくできるわけですけどもこの計画も今コンペティションの最中で私の審査にもやっておりますでこういう地域が、まあ、これは構想図ですけども、こういうような外部を作っていこうと,というようなですね、えー、視聴者もこういった海に開いて、川に開いた視聴者にしていくといし、また、えー、この地区、ここまで今までやってきたのですが、さらにこの周りまでこう考えて、全体がリング状の魅力をまあ街にしていく、ヒューマンな街にしていくというふうに考えます。またですね、こういったプロジェクトに対して、えー、住民のコミュニティの人たちがやはりこう空間を作ることに魅力を感じるといった施策をいろいろやっていましたまた私は大,今大学の学におりますので学生たちと一緒にこういったイベントを行ってですねそしてこれはスマートイルミネーションを横浜で私はその実行委員長を行っているわけですけども新しい光して,ての環境に優しい光 LED とかですねそういったものを用いながら地域にのこういったものを作って設置することによって地域空間を再発見すると、まあ、そういったことも一緒に行ってこんなことも行っておりますこれはつい先週先の土曜日を行って私が土曜日このやった写真です土曜日先の土曜日の写真ですねでこのようにですね第2期は市民による都市空間の活用それから活動の創造新しい都市財活の領域の開発、こういったことの段階に生きているということでございます。はい、どうもありがとうございました
accommodation in past three decades happened in Shenzhen in China. Um, in 
So this is a, a, a Western organization. We need to discuss and share the international platform. We need to rethink what we have done well, what we have done wrong. So, uh, for example, the city developed so quickly and, and this is totally uh, the, the top down process. But we also have a, a, a bottom up uh, a phenomenon we call it the uh, open reach. This is the totally uh, informal development uh, building by the uh, local regions. And over 50% of Shenzhen buildings are built by the villagers. Uh, illegally, and over 50% of the population in Shenzhen lives in those uh, buildings. So this is a different uh, typology of the uh, local uh, religious buildings in first generation, and then the second generation is uh, the two or three uh, floors uh, single house. When uh, Dr. Wing visited Shenzhen in 1984, uh, he, he visited those uh, uh, Peter's uh, single house and, and he uh, very satisfied uh, is that this is the, the, the dream for all the uh, Chinese Peter to own their uh, single house. But just uh, 15 years, the, those the villagers own a uh, single house, they demolished and uh, they torn down and built uh, the high rise. <coughs> So, so many uh, uh, buildings uh, in order which yeah. turn down and build more high density high rise, uh, uh, high rise. And this is why Shenzhen need the platform and we, so we, we, we set up uh, the Shenzhen binary uh, on Oblivion architecture. This is uh, the first uh, Oblivion uh, piano focus on urban here. And in 2005, we, we, we started the first uh, binary uh, curated by uh, Yong Ho Chang. Uh, his thing is the open uh, city, open door, because Shenzhen is the, the city uh, which uh, implement the, the, the policy of the open door. Well, this is the wedding design in the uh, uh, in Dutch area, uh, in OCT. So, uh, was made a very the OCT antique factory buildings, and the content of the uh, binary was the cluster of the different cities, and was the mirror of the reality of the Chinese cities. And he uh, created the space Intervene the, the space, the, the, the side. So this is the the, uh, the, the wedding before the by uh, Annie, uh, and this is after uh, after the piano, this area uh, become the um, uh, OCT lot uh, creative uh, park, and this is the, the before. And after the binary, before and after. So the, the binary is about uh, the everyday life. Uh, so the uh, animated uh, uh, people in the city, and it's also about the uh, design of clothes and design of food and design for uh, living. And design for walking, and the, the design. Of, yeah, this is a, a doc, documentary video by uh, Ai Weiwei uh, along the uh, Chang'an Street. And it's also about the entertainment, about the uh, Shan Park, about the border, how to open the border, because Shenzhen uh, is a special economy which closed by uh, the fence. Uh, we call it exactly. <laughs> Border. And it's also about the informal city, we call it urban village. This is uh, some case about the urban bridge. And it's also about the informal uh, building. This building are uh, built by uh, 
that they are. They're all made uh, for uh, 40 years. Uh, it's also about the architectural theory and about the uh, architectural uh, cluster, the relations between the buildings. And also the, about the local privacy, this is uh, uh, buildings by Wang Shu, the critical, uh, uh, critical architect. China. And this is also about the um, local plans by Huang Shengyuan in Taiwan. And this is also about the, the plans with user. This is by the CNQ uh, in Taiwan. So this is the fourth scenario. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, the, uh, how to open uh, and the day, daily life. Um, we, the open curating and about the architecture uh, sure. And in 2007, uh, we uh, have another curator, Ding uh, Qingyuma. Uh, his thing is open uh, with generation and the value is, is close uh, to the false value. And it, his feelings about the uh, urban inspiration and regeneration about the agricultural uh, intelligence and it's about uh, uh, some uh, research on the local, on Shenzhen and PRD. And it's a sun, uh, this is the only means uh, works about the uh, uh, the border, the, the second line, a uh, second boundary of the Shenzhen, and this is about the, uh, the daily life. And this is about the transportation, and yeah, this is also the infrastructure, uh, and the green the traffic. So the, uh, the second scenario uh, is about the, the temporality and and the uh, architectural and rural, and also about the infrastructure. So we have a 239 uh, owning is the curator, and he chose the uh, value in the central plaza, uh, plaza uh, in Shenzhen. He tried to use the VR, uh, VR by anyone to mobilize the people to use their public space and to engage them and get them to think more about the city politics and their rights for the citizens. So uh, he uh, installed some works in, in, in the uh, huge empty crater in Shenzhen. And encouraged people to uh, to play the, uh, in front of the uh, office buildings of the of the city officers and yeah this uh, uh, sculpture by the city motto and yeah and activated the empty space and this is a uh, 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 the border garden and this species is about the, the uh, local climate and this is about the urban farm, it's made by uh, Joseph Griffin uh, and, and Jeffrey Junction. And this was all uh, uh, the cocoon made uh, uh, of uh, bamboo designed by Xian Jun, this beautiful uh, uh, structure. And also, to be now talking about the uh, ruler region and farm. And we also provide uh, run class and enhanced village to uh, make the marathon talk in Shenzhen. So only uh, contribute uh, the, uh, the rural topic in the uh, center finale. And also uh, about the, uh, how to activate the, the public space. And then we, in 2011, we uh, invited Terry Spidey as a curator, and he chose the value in OCT and the uh, uh, city square. And this is uh, uh, the open 
make sense to explain things on the old uh, problems of old Europe. But anyway, you invited me and uh, so I give you my lecture with very, very small uh, numbers of pictures because of it's, it's not enough time to explain the all the planning system in detail from that what happened in Berlin. Okay. Uh, one remark of my person, I have been head of the building uh, department, city architects, chief architect from Berlin for 16 years. But when the war came down and up to two or six, and I'm a social democratic member of the social democratic party, so I elect winner. But at the same time, I'm a very conservative urban planner. And that makes the, we, therefore, we have an enormous debate about the intellectuals because you, as the former left movement, were fighting for traditional urban structures. And that was all these, uh, all my friends from the avant garde, they, they, they were absolutely confused from, from that. But I still, uh, now it's nine, nine years again that I stopped my being active as a building director. And I still feel that is in general the right position. So, okay, uh, 25 years uh, after Germans and uh, Berlin's reunification years of euphoria and at the same time of massive speculation and major private public building investments is now a popular post-industrial European city with 3.6 million inhabitants as a consequence of the Second World War and the division in different sectors, East and West, Communist and Capitalist Berlin lost its function as the largest industrial city on the European continent as a center of bank, the German banks sector, and as a center as German's capital. So, so the city left uh, lost everything what it, what, what it was. In the meantime, uh, this is an actual photo Berlin became again the function of the capital city. Germany's function as industrial and a bank city did not come back. Because of that, the post-industrial Berlin tries to find a new social and economical identity with modern creative industries, media, culture, fashion, entertainment, science, and tourism. Therefore, Berlin is so popular among the younger people not because of their industry, old industry, but because of their fashion industry and music industry, design, etc., etc., and tourism. To understand the character of this actual Berlin, two figures: the Berlin, the people, the 3.6 million people live in 1.9 million flats, with an average of 40 square meter per person. 50% of these flats are single households. So we are absolutely a post-industrial society. The most of the, the traditional family, father, mother, two kids, and a dog is a small minority. So the, 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 the normal the structure of households of single house, single household. In all this, with all this, the new. Uh, Structure. So uh, homosexuals, uh, students, uh, divorced people, older people, young people, and all this the whole sector, the whole structure of, uh, of modern uh, industry, of modern society. To understand, <coughs> Berlin describes it itself as a growing city, but, uh, but, uh, but but the dimensions of growing are far away from the exploding process in Asian city like Seoul or Shenzhen. Shenzhen. The original, uh, originally the expansion and the typical character of as a modern, modern European city goes back to the uh, 19th century, the middle of the 19th century, from 1871 up to 1910. Berlin grows from 19. 900,000 uh, up to 3.7 million. So we had in 1910 already the same inhabitants like we have uh, we have it uh, uh, today. 
the professional fundament of this expansion was the so-called Hopel plan. So it was a plan from a, not from an architect, not from an engineer, not from a planner, it was a plan from an engineer, Theodore engineer. His plan was ordered by the Prussian police without any democratic elements. Hopel and very uh, very successful engineer, he came from uh, learned from England, was following the practical experience of Osman plan in Paris in 1862 and Jadda's plan uh, from Barcelona, for Barcelona in 1859. So it was a, 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 a main, uh, main, uh, the main plans, uh, expansion of plans in European city has been made by engineers. Not from not from architect, not from planners as we are. So we are talking about design. They never talk on design, but they were very successful. Anya, anya, we anya. have to think on that. Uh, so design is okay, but uh, for, the, for the structure of the city, it's important to have a, a physical uh, physical element. What is good for the next hundred years? Those plans. This is a hope. Hope plan. Those plans were. Also, not set, not set by planners or architects, but by engineers. So, we laid down the different dimension of the streets, public spaces, and parks. This, this is called the Hauptrecht plan, the master plan of Hauptrecht uh, plan. Uh, he made no stipulations regarding the typology of individual houses, their specific character. Characteristic, characteristic uh, uh, for Berlin was determined by the dimension of the blocks, so huge blocks, and the building regulations circulated uh, the height of the houses and the size of the courtyards. So maximum 30 meters, 20 meters uh, each block. So this was the simple rules, and up to now it's uh, zero regulations. So we took the modern regulations from the from the, from the 19, from the 18, uh, from 1860. With this type of splitting the responsibility for public spaces, security and hygiene from the local government, police and private building companies, Berlin managed the exploding city and produced a sustainable structure that is useful and popular up to now. This is important. It's all these plans we saw from the forest from Shenzhen. There's no master plan. It's just American high-rise ideas. Uh, maybe good architect, but bad. Uh, this is not, it doesn't work as an urban uh, structure. This plan from Chadda and from Osman and from Lowe is still successful up to now in, uh, in our century. Very popular among, especially among young, uh, young people. So this is. This has been the Hopri, the Chadda plan. Uh, so it's, you, you, you would find it as a plan from an idiot, yeah, because it's only one idea, uh, but it's extremely ex successful in Europe, not, not in Asia. Europe. And so again, this is the existing the Berlin from today. So without high rise buildings, so this is a plan from, from the uh, middle of the 19th. Between the uh, First World War and the year 1970, despite every political rupture, democracy, the, uh, we call Republic, Republic of Germany in the, uh, in the, in the 20s, the fascism, democracy again, and communism in a divided and occupied city, Berlin, underwent a radical break with a young urban tradition from the late 19th century. The new elements for a modern city are open residential structures, cancellation of corridor streets, space for motorized individual transportation, modern architecture built by public owned housing companies. This was the architect period of Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier, uh, Walter Gropius, Lies van der Ober, Bruno Taut, Hans Meinhof, all these famous architects from the, from the 20s. And Service who became famous in Europe and they immigrated to the United States or to South, South America. So they, 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 it was a period, this was a period from, from German and European architects who immigrated outside Germany because of fascism.
fascism come, and from that they, uh, they rule the whole, uh, the whole uh, world. But all these urbanistic and architectural structures lost their importance because of the Nazi terror during the Second World War. So this is important to know for Germany because the Nazi terror, the German terror is extremely important for our identity. So everybody, if somebody looks back in, in every in every moment you get in contact to the to this brown shit. So you, you hate it. And therefore nobody is interested in looking backwards because everybody said we have to go to the wonderful future and don't don't get in contact to this old period from the Nazi period or from the Kaiser period, non-democratic period. It's extremely important political uh, uh, ideas from the so the Second World War uh, ended in Berlin with destroyed buildings, especially in the city center. Not the villages, but the rich people, the bombs, the, the, all the European cities have been bombed, and not only the Europeans have been bombed, the inner cities, not the richer areas. So not the factories, but the, the, uh, the, the city center has been bombed. So the identity historical center, but creates the identity of this European city. But important is the fact that the street system, including the technical infrastructure, what you don't have in, 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 in say, up to now. So walking to your city, I see this electricity. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a structure from, from the beginning of the 19th, uh, of the 20th century. So, so all this electricity Sewer life, all this system was not bombed. It was still ex they existed then when the, when the uh, city has been uh, destroyed. Uh, because of the political conflicts between, between the Soviet Union and the United States, Great Britain and France, Berlin became in many aspects, uh, uh, many aspects, uh, economics, cultural, urban design, the city of the Cold War. To demonstrate the different attitudes to the future of the city as a picture of politics. So I just show you this was the, the, the inner city, the black flag from the inner city. I show it on the Biennale, on Sorea, and, and it was destroyed by bombs. So Berlin has been the venue of a permanent international town. Uh, town planning and architecture exhibitions in the city district has been destroyed by bombs since society uh, were confronted with Berlin's history as headquarters. The Nazi regime, in addition to this, the city was occupied soon as the winner. The specific political uh, and cultural situation of the process of rebuilding the city started with a, with a plan from Anschau. This is a plan from Anschau, a very famous German architect. Uh, he ignored everything for the whole city and the separate in East and West was followed in radical purposes. No reconstruction of traditional city grids, no consideration of private land and house on it, more space for expected culture, modern architecture for solving the question of how the public dream as an essential for the city as a landscape. Remarkable uh, was the fact that the, the city, the city fact that the process took place in the competition between Political, two political contrary systems, the Soviet Russian idea of the communism and the idea of the democratic capitalist society from comes from the United States. So the architecture of the city became an important uh, element of the Cold War. And both sides of the war, planners and architects, uh, were searching for an absolute new type of a, of a city for post-war society without the memory to the different phases of history and the power of the human identity. So it became Moscow for the eastern and Los Angeles for the western uh, part. Uh, the, uh, the model for, for the city development and its architecture. So we have uh, we have two two not German ideas, but ideas from outside. Uh, what became the main uh, gave, gave the main ideas for the city, the city development and its architecture. Visiting Berlin, you can still find document of this urban design competition during the late 50s. The former Stalinali. And uh, the Hansa photo that was just before the this year. So, um, and the motorway west and the tramway in east. The Hansa photo has been planned by uh, 
by the, and built as an example of a modern city landscape a la Le Corbusier and were produced from an international building exhibition in 1954, 58, with freestanding objects and famous items, Gorkios, Niemeyer items, all this international items on the other side of the, of the wall, the, the, the Steinallee, the circular interpretation of a Grand Boulevard which represents the possibilities of an Osirian political system to produce uniform city and space for demonstration. The kind of planet ends in Westphalia when the government in 1984 uh, organized the International Building Exhibition with a new premises of critical reconstruction of the former city with combined with modern buildings. Combined with modern buildings. Every single architect. So, so, Herr uh, Kohl has Peter Eidemann Saar, the Charles Moore, Gerkan, Gregotti, Mario Botto, Aldo, all these famous architects, they have been invited to the, to this, uh, to this, uh, to this EBA, have to accept the rules of urban design guidelines set up from the uh, director. So, I have to come to an end, yeah, sorry about that. That was very, these are two objects from uh, Aldo Rossi and uh, Peter Eisenman. Um, you have to accept the guidelines. Remember your picture from Shenzhen, so this is just covered on uh, 30 meters maximum. Social housing, this social housing. After the fall uh, of the war, so I became, I came in, uh, as I explained, I, I came in, in, uh, in the power and the, 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 first, uh, the first debate we had on the so called Potsdamer Platz has been destroyed, been part of the Berlin Wall. So then we organize a competition, and the competition with all these international architects are invited, and they, they make the proposal, their proposal of the future of the, future of the city. Um, this is a project from London, uh, from William Walter, got the first prize. This was Daniel Liebeskin. We kicked him out, the second crowd. And then Pem Kohlhaas, he was a member of the jury, he, he said, okay, if you don't want this project, I can please the jury. And that was happy for Berlin because then we got the first prize to this pro project. My favorite from Christoph Sattler, Heinz Silber from Munich, and they, ex he, they say we try to, uh, to develop the city as a European city. And we try to Berlin as Berlin, not as Chicago or Shenzhen or uh, Seoul or whatever. So, this was the cultural debate inside the city and inside politics, not only inside the group of, uh, group of politics. So this decision became the model uh, for the lot of inner city uh, project restriction, urban restriction, roof line 30 meters, roof line uh, 22 meters, urban mixture 20% housing in every building. So, so this was, you, you could, and all these international operating architects and investors came in my office and they asked, is it true? You, the maximum is 30 meters. I said, yes, it's really true. It's not allowed higher than 30 meters. Everybody accepted this. The, 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 the important was that the government, the mayor and the, my, my head of the political department, my political chief, they accepted what we did. And this was important without a connection between politics and urban design and yeah. okay. So then we organized uh, different different things like a per, uh, famous uh, Platz that was still built under uh, uh, this guideline with uh, Frank Gehring, you have to look for Frank Gehring in, in, in this structure, you can't find it, but it's still uh, true that there is a building from Frank Gehring in the American embassy that the British embassy and the French embassy. Everybody has to accept this. Uh, so the following, uh, the following phase uh, can, uh, or the, the phase of the big plan. So I, I set up a big plan in a city, uh, so-called plan, uh, not just the German word, uh, 30 square kilometers, 300,000 inhabitants. And it, it, we decided, we, we debated it for three years. We set up it first day. In 1996, and then uh, it was decided to come in 1999. And this, uh, this was
was a plan with new buildings. A plan, not from my thing, a plan from my office. So I was a workshop in my office. This is 10 or 15 first. And we did it mainly. And was accepted from the government. Every corner has been designed from the city. Not from my thing, not by competition. Just from our from the office. So it was without an international building exhibition. But it was a building exhibition. It has been debated very, very to plan work oriented to West Berlin, to EBA concept of construction of the streets, to reducing the public area to all the big traffic, now that it was free, and to create areas with individual private. So, this is the situation now. So, the main street in Berlin, in the Brock, and at least the last year we tried to, to bring individual houses on the urban scale back to the city of this is in front of the foreign ministry so the center of the center of the city center so we have this individual houses from the individual architect architect is not important because the structure is important we decided the government decided to give land six meter wide plots to private that and they did it in the uh, in the I don't know the 18th century or the middle. So it it was a it was an extremely important decision, not an architectural decision, but an urban design decision. So then it's uh, Berlin uh, preserves his identity as a traditional European city and became again an example of individual contemporary architectural solution as a component as a component of the architectural. Of the city. That is a citate from Adolf's my favorite uh, architecture from, from Italy, and he wrote about the architecture of the city, not the architecture of the building, not the architecture of the city. Is We, we 
that in that moment, probably is this triangle uh, between the new technology, the, the, the globalization, and the, and the transformation from the uh, modern industrial urbanism has been very quickly at the post-modern, for post, uh, for this period in the last 30 years. Uh, in the 19th century, we see the transformation between the agricultural economy, the industry, the, the mayors, the national states, and now uh, and the new industrial technologies, but little by little we arrived at the, the, the final of the 20th century with uh, new technologies, practically without physical supranational organization for the governments of the world and the post-industrial economy that today is neo-tertiary economy. But the situation is what Nata has provoked in the last 20 years much more parameters in this case are very important for me these three demographic evolution, migration flux as a new ecology culture. The evolution is very important because you know, here in this area of the world, the growth of the, growth of the next 40 years will be between 55-65 percent of the population. But in America, the growth will be 25 percent from Canada to Patagonia in all America. But in Africa, with the growth of 100% of the population, and passed from 1 million people to 2 million people in only 40 years. In Europe, we are zero growth, and Russia less few points. First consequence, we can talk about of the urban models with this enormous discourse, this pressure in the demographic. In Europe, we can talk about of the new cities. We need a new cities. Our question is, will it be possible to conserve the existing cities with the natality and with the people and with the economy that we have in the moment? But this is absolutely different. Uh, so, well, this is what the migration is uh, absolutely clear. In the moment, for example, in Europe, we are very important for these questions. Uh, one million people of Syria will be entrance in Europe in the, last, in the next year. And the Council of Germany, this is Angela Merkel, will go the last week to Turkey and offer. 3,000 million of dollars each year if the Turkish government stop the people in the border with you. This is the situation that we have in the world. Because we can absorb probably 1 million people in several countries. And in the other hand, the new approach in advance that we can talk about, this is the more relevant question. But there are more questions important for this hypothetical situation of the, the new culture of the territory and the translation of the Vietnam, the, 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 the economic power uh, moving from west to west, the digital revolution, and the concentration in the cities of population that came of the, of the country in this scope. I think that the, the situation emerged as probably uh, the only possibility that we have for tolerance in the uh, situation in this sense uh, implies not only urbanistic cities, but uh, but uh, relevant governance. Uh, it's very clear that the state nation that has born at the end of the 19th century. And we play this in a very clear uh, dissolution process. And it's very important in this sense to create a new balance between the state nation and the situation. And this is the sense 
in my opinion, uh, for talking about the, the, the governance uh, in the middle. Because it is impossible uh, remodeling the existing cities, especially in big metropolis, large metropolis like the city, without a new model for governance. This global context is specific characteristics, for example, the new metabolic efficiency. Uh, and I, I, I talk about, for example, about the 2000 baths. So, so, so that in, in the cities in North America consume uh, 12,000 baths per day. In Europe, 6,000. In this part of the world, 12,000. The government of Switzerland, in collaboration with the PTA, has defined in 2000 the maximum possibilities for the people of Switzerland. And this is truth and possible. But what is the conditions to arrive this relevant degrees of the cost of the energy. Obviously, the design of the cities and especially the technology. About the, 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 this question, I like to see that the, the technology is the only possible that we have in the moment uh, not to impose change in the, in the plane, in the, in the real operation, uh, the situation of the, of the city. In the same, uh, the urbanity, the consequence of the diversity is, is very clear that People define the cities, the people, uh, many years before, a thousand years before, Aristotle said no. The city is the people only if the people is diverse. This is the main. Uh, and then uh, it's impossible, uh, to, for example, to create the complexity without diversity. Obviously, without density. I would like to discuss with Saskia Saskia about the question that uh, she talked about yesterday, but in any case, the complexity necessary to resolve the problems of the city today and tomorrow, born as a consequence of the diversity, as a consequence of the density. But remember that in the 70s, uh, there are the probably the high density. The intensity of the city for tomorrow is not the same as the high density. It is the ingredient, is another kind of complexity. It is the contrary of the heritage that we have in the culture of the form. It is possible to think, to identify, program, and sign. Sign with probably many problems. But in this process of the postponing for, post, uh, for this uh, period of the last 30 40 years, there are one moment of the prayer, which is 2008. And 2008 was the financial crisis. For the people, the crash of the mortgage, yesterday, Saskia was shown clearly. But for us, is the final of the paradigm five. Because what's very easy in the last 30 years, produce the city with the paradigm financialist, insurance, real estate, enterprise. Now it's finished. Not in the side of the world, but it's finished in America and in Europe. And then in that moment, not only we have models, 
urbanist models for the city. We have a political and economical models and financial models for the city. And this must be clear in Europe with the crisis that we have in America. And it's for the reason that emerged the global situation. Because uh, in this moment, uh, we should be, in my opinion, uh, I, I, I come back another time to review some of the thesis of the 60s or 70s when uh, Gregory Watterson, who uh, sociology, uh, wrote about the questions. The project is the context. So different than the uh, culture that we learn in our faculties uh, with the theoretical ideas about the uh, Corbusier looking one space from the house or another after the project of the context is the question, especially in the Metropolitan In the other hand, one question very important for the new thesis of sociology that is why the human is having common patterns. Patterson has interrogated this question. He remarked the difference between the animals and the And in this sense, it's, 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 it's very important to, to remark this uh, affinity with the thesis of the new uh, theme of the system. For me, in that moment, they will support the technology that we have to understand the new, the new ecology for black and citizens. Because then this resonance is uh, obviously different or are the same model in the world. I think that it is really very clear. Uh, the cities are a specific model of colonies. It's not possible uh, talking about of the in 
Variation Surface with uh, Soja. And then this is uh, dramatic for Argentina, especially, and for, uh, for Brazil. And then, in this sense, we should be studying in this uh, new urban region the possibility to integrate new agricultural ways and probably new ruralism, because we have many uh, small cities, major cities, very historical, very small, but very important for the identity of the, of the territory. National parks and reserves and, and, and spaces for the renewable infrastructures. But the main problem in these regions is a discontinuity between the continuum urban continuous and the, 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 the discontinuities between the natural system by the effect, negative effect of the linear infrastructure, basically transportation infrastructure. And should be cancelled this I don't know if the Sarpinsky uh, Triadon system is a kind of solution or something like that, but uh, this is uh, the main uh, question for the the diversity of, of cities, the, 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 the multi centralities that there are in this city, in this uh, new uh, city region, uh, the paradigm of the archipelago model, imply that the study of this kind of elements of discussion, of, for example, we should be established a new geography of centralities. We should be working for the optimization of the relationship between the different clusters. For example, the airport. The airport 20 years ago was one hub of transportation. Today, no. Today, one important airport in the world is practically the first economical cluster of the region. In this airport in China, you can be beyond the main airport. And it's true. And you know, for example, that the new airports in all the world, then come is major for the military activities that for the transport activities. And this is the, the and then and you know that in the American border between Mexico and the uh, and United States has built in the last 10 years 75 airports. Do you think that this is to transport tourists? No, no, this is the base of the industrial district number one in America. Not the rail, not the motorway. In this case, a new concept of the transportation. Qualification of the natural space, thinking that this is the future of our city. New legibility of the regional scale, especially uh, through the public space network. And then, uh, lastly, the, working about the new efficient corridors, because the, the history of the efficiency of the corridors has, has been transformed very, very quickly in the last uh, 30, 40 years from the dual cities that was practically the more classical uh, integration between the cities to the three elements, creating the electric affinities. And in this is the best example is Dallas Forward. Dallas Forward in the middle of the territory imposed one airport because don't like the, the, the connection between the two cities and at the end there are one third element and today the triangle of Dallas Forward Airport is a territory with a high rent in the United States. But when I talk about of the interaction between the design stations and the of the territorial culture, regional systems, infrastructures, and architecture. I don't like to put scandals uh, arms. I, I prefer talking about of the, for me, the most uh, interesting interaction between is when uh, 
a l'àrea de Vicente de Pala de Envigo, on the place of the Roman Centuration in the territory of Veneto. What is the Palladio? The architecture of the Vienes. But in this plan, only the central media is there, but this element is to resolve the economical problems of the countryside. It's a system for the territory. And this is the reason because the neo-Palladianism, the Palladianism is so important in England, and at the end is the model that takes Thomas Jefferson for organizing the territory of the United States. Uh, we have many examples like that. Uh, for example, the good collaboration between Hilbert Seymour and Miss Van der Rohe in Detroit. It's a very good example of the coherence between system, infrastructure, and architecture. Obviously, we don't talk a lot of, about Lafayette. Two small examples to find out. Uh, without this new government, it should be possible uh, the, the, the big problems that we have in the market. The first is the new mobility matrix. We are in the, we can continue. And in this sense, it's very important the disruption. It's not possible the sustainability of the mobility matrix today. Then it's necessary something like that. But especially the last point. There was a tendency to improve mobility and ecological matters. This is one tendency that has started in Germany and the north of Europe in that moment, absolutely important, in my opinion, in the next years. And then with the new technologies the, that, that we can uh, see, the disruptive technology for transport, especially uh, for the individual transport. So because the base of the mobility of the city for tomorrow is not the collective, it's the individual transportation. This is the base. And the last question, impossible without a new model of situation, a new model of governance, is the question of the residents. In the last August, has been published uh, for Lloyd's Bank, one uh, very important project about what happened with the residents of the city in the next years. He has worked in between 15 and 25. They talking about only for the next 10 years. And the next 10 years, 300 cities in the world will be necessary 4.5 trillion of dollars to pay the consequence of the disasters. Disasters from many consequences, for example, the crash of the But the question is that uh, this bond of money, five trillions, are concentrated especially in 10 cities. And the order is Taipei, Tokyo, Seoul. Seoul is the city number three. And we need 180 billion of dollars in the next 10 years to resolve the catastrophe that will be in this city. In opinion of the two important organizations, the Swiss Re, is the conglomeration of the oil companies of Switzerland, the insurance and the uh, This is, in my opinion, some of the questions that uh, I propose uh, to explain the, 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 the new complexity that we need, uh, including in the, in the future analysis. And the reference to the Barcelona, uh, maybe we can explain after the discussion.
Good morning, still good morning for all. Uh, first of all, thank you for this very kind invitation to my city and for me to come to this nice city and to this very important event. I will uh, try to make a comprehensive presentation about Medellin as a city and its process that has been the expression of how we have been able to become a resilient and innovative city in terms of how we have been able to create a critical uh, situation in the past. Uh, my presentation will use a lot of pictures, so I will not explain in detail way any one of them, but I will try to use them as a tool to show you what we are. We are located in the northwestern side of South America, looking red on the west, on the, on the left side. We are a country of uh, almost 45, 46 million inhabitants, and a, a very important country located in the north of South America, as I have already said, in the end of the Andes Mountains. And Medellin is the capital of the region of Antioquia, located in a metropolitan valley that you see there. This uh, satellite image show you, shows you how we are connected to the we're very close as a region to both oceans, and we are uh, in the Andes Mountains, in the end of the Andes Mountains, in the north of South America, where the city is uh, uh, located 1,500 meters above the level of the sea. It's a very narrow valley that you can see down there in the, in the bottom of the image, and then it is in the center of the valley. Which is very nice to see is that what is very nice to see is that the river comes from south to north, and you can have this beautiful condition of uh, the light coming to the mountains in the morning and the afternoon, in the morning to the western side and in the afternoon to the east. We are a very urbanized valley, a metropolitan region of ten municipalities. You can see in red. How was the city in the 50s and, and yellow how it is now? It's a very complex process of uh, multiplying 10 times the population in those years, and the uh, integration of that uh, municipalities asks for the metropolitan articulation in a country where the municipalities are so autonomous. So you, we have, you have 10 mayors with a strong autonomy that uh, plans for. Uh, governance and for uh, cooperation. Medellin is a very interesting city because for its geography, mainly it's a rural area. So if you see in that color, similar to green color, there are a whole lot of rural areas and in, in red you have the uh, favorite. Uh, just an overview from the west to see how the the organization has gone uh, to the mountains. And what I want to show you, just to explain to you, explain to you, it's that it means a collective process because we have been able to develop a very uh, interesting process in the last 25 years that ha has been based upon our tradition. Medellin in the 19th century started to be uh, an emerging city. It was a little village with some power because of, uh, of the mining uh, uh, coffee production and the connection through the railway to the Magdalena River and to the, uh, to the world. So we uh, started to become a very powerful economical center for Colombia, the second largest city of the country. And during the first uh, 70, 60 years of the 20th century, and it was in some way a powerful city, but during the 70s we became in a critical situation. Our economy collapsed, our society has a lot of problems, not only because of the famous narcotraffic and violence by guys like Pablo Escobar and his groups, but also because our manufacturing industry collapsed after Colombia destroyed the railway network. So the city became unconnected and our economy were, became broken. So all those, all that things was complemented by a a strong urbanization process developed in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And, uh, and, and the result of all that was a very uh, inequality, unequal 
segregated, fragmented society that grow, that which which grow uh, through informality mainly. Sixty percent of the MFA requests informal. So we look uh, during the uh, uh, end of the 80s, a society which was almost inviolable as a city. And from that moment on, we started a transformation process that has been a, uh, an opportunity to try transform our pre crisis as a big opportunity through resiliency and through the building of citizenship. So we have found that uh, through this data, information that shows you how the evolution of the city has been progressing uh, in many times. You look uh, in, uh, here, you look the statistics about the separation of poverty, the separation of extreme poverty, the unemployment rates from the past until now, how we have been able to reduce the um, historical reduction of the murder rates of the city. So in many terms, Medellin has been able to, during those, these recent years to transform negative data, negative situations into uh, opportunities and to uh, strategic solutions. So what means this is that strong questions has been an opportunity to have big responses. We have been able to build a community and that means building public life, building the city as a public uh, capital for everyone. And we have been able also to use, as you have, uh, will see later, architecture and urbanism as social tools. More than buildings, more than infrastructures, we have been able to develop uh, social strategies to build a community. And in, in this time, uh, thing, it's very important the role of the schools of, of architecture. Universities with, uh, became city labs. I may, might remember with my friend Francisco Sanin developing some workshops in the beginning of, of the 90s inside the School of Architecture that uh, was, we were working about uh, the botanical garden that after some years became transformed. So during the 90s, the School of Architecture was a type of uh, lab, living lab for the city in question. So um, this uh, means that we have been working for uh, a long-term process trying to recover the city for the people and trying to recover the city uh, in search of public life. So all these uh, projects that you can see in the pictures are new projects developed in the last 15 years. New public spaces, new museums, using landscapes for life, for convivence, for art, for culture. And that's been very positive because with this process we have also created a new generation of leadership a new generation of people that it's uh, uh, more civic and more politically involved in the transformation of the city. This is a public library, for example. This is an open air auditorium. And uh, this, this was, uh, and it's very important because this was a parking lot. This always was, was also. So this was a, a big parking lot and it was transformed for a public facility to musical educate, music education. And the, this in the, in, the, in the front you have a wall which is a, uh, which is used to project movies in an open air auditorium. So this is very important because it shows you what I was trying to mean that for us infrastructures and public spaces have been a way to build the community. In many ways, during the worst moment of violence, we developed, uh, 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 there was an ONG that created what is called the Poetry Festival from Medellin. It has become a very powerful institution that is now recognized as the most important public festival for poetry in the world. And it was developed in this open air auditorium. So infrastructures became a way of building, new ways of building together. So that this is very, very important from my presentation. And also, when you talk about mobility, when you talk about the metro, the famous metro cable, the gondolas for the metro, which is very interesting is how we were able to innovate 
to use a conventional transportation system into a new way. But what it means is not only transportation. It means inclusion. It means accessibility. Because all those communities before this system were segregated, were fallen apart. So now we have understood that that's a powerful tool. And also we have a, in some way a tradition for planning and we have developed methodologies like the Integral Urban Projects Police that has been a methodology to integrate the several strategic actions from the government into planning and urbanism. So I will show you through these images some interventions around the Botanical Garden and the Moravia Hill that shows you how uh, through culture again, through uh, innovative buildings for creation and for the, the knowledge, new public facilities like these libraries developed by Major Fajardo and Major Salazar in the past, the new uh, sports facilities. We are, have been working a lot using architecture again as a, as, a, as a way of inviting the communities to live in a, in a different way. But also as a strategy to create co-responsibility about the city. And that's very important because young cities like ours has the problem that we don't have civic tradition and governance enough. So meaningful projects like these, the escalators, the mechanical escalators of the Comuna Trece has been a powerful things. And I like to show you that, I, I love to show this because this was a, a landfill in the middle of the city. And after some years it became uh, urbanized through informal settlements, similar to the favelas. So the people, 10,000 people was living on top of the, of the land. So uh, in 2004 we started a project called the Master Plan for Moravia. Yeah. Sorry. Reservoirs or the aqueduct 
So we have understood that in those places we have this situation. Green areas in the middle of high densified barriers without public space with this idea. So we have invented the possibility to transform infrastructures, functional infrastructures like, like this, into civic homes, civic places in the barriers like this. And this is the result the transformation of a former infrastructure into a new public facility. And recently, we are very proud that uh, the Global Housing Gold Award was, uh, uh, was, won, was has been won by, by one of, our, of, of these projects. It's called Uba El Felinar. So we, we keep on trying to understand that, that idea of the public facility as the opportunity to create communities. We have been uh, transforming this uh, former jail close to the public library and to the metro train station and metro cable station into a new public university which is part of a group of three public campuses, three new public campuses, university campuses that we are building today in the city. So to end, I will ask just for two or three minutes, I'm sorry, I will uh, try to show you what uh, I call multi-scale plan because Normally, we have been thinking that only through urban projects, through urban design, we can be, uh, transform the cities. But we know, we understand that we have to have a work in the multi scale uh, strategy uh, procedures. So we are doing this. We have created a metropolitan plan in 2004 with continuity in recent years, and now we have been approving this new master plan for the city that will leave the city until 2027, with the idea of developing the connection between the region and the uh, inner city, and the integration of everything into the system of the river, which means growing inside, controlling the urban sprawl to the borders, uh, preserving the ecological system of the rural areas, and transforming the river on, uh, not only into a functional infrastructure but also into a urban landscape. Connecting everything through a um, transportation system which is multimodal that includes not only the metro system but the new tram line, new metro cables, public bike, uh, bike shared systems and BRT buses so that the, the city today is integrated into uh, six public modes for transportation and trying to control this, trying to preserve the richness of our environment, to, to preserve our biodiversity, which is very important, through a, a good strategic plan. So these white zones must be regenerated, re, re, re redeveloped in the next years along the riverside, controlling the expansion to the borders and preserving the landscape of the city. So this is the objective idea, the objective image of the city. Connecting the river, the little rivers that comes from top of the mountains, and the borders, where we are planning a, a project that you will see later, it's called the Green Belt. So our strategy is to reintegrate the ecological system, which is uh, very powerful as you can see, into uh, a quality for, uh, for the life of the cities. A way of creating new public spaces inside the city, transforming this through interventions like the ones that you are seeing there. New facilities to control the expansion by bringing the people uh, uh, spaces for life. And the strategic planning has become a chance to create these. If you look at the yellow line, it's a transformation of the city into the river parks that will uh, make the possibility to have regeneration of many areas of the river, to have the more dense places. If you look at this, it's low dense, with uh, low economical power, to transform all these along the river into the new city. So we have been using international competitions like this. It was called the City Hall. It was a 500 uh, hectares competition, including two master plans to the to the hills here and here, and the urban regeneration along the riverside. So we are also uh, making competitions 
for new public spaces or public spaces renovations in the downtown. The new innovation district, which is located close to the landfill and the public university. So we have a master plan to promote uh, an innovation district along the, the place. So we, we, we believe in planning. We believe in urban design, but we also believe in interventions. We believe in projects. So this is the winner, the competition winner for the Ringo Park system, which is now under construction. We have uh, been working in this for four years to transform what is used to be a, a highway uh, border uh, river into a, a transformation uh, as a functional system with underground highways, but together with uh, new public uh, spaces and new uh, biodiversity strategies for the development of the internal city. But what the main idea is to recover the, the river life, but also to recover life, the river for the citizens. So to conclude the last three images, Medellin uh, means empowering the people, territories and democratic participation with uh, leadership, uh, having medium and long-term vision, and a uh, collective shared project. I, I, I like to say that uh, we have come from a city of dwellers to one of citizens. And our social policies through inclusive development have been consistent, has uh, bring confidence for the citizens, so we trust in our future. And that's, uh, that was almost impossible recently. Our main lessons are building public life as a conception of the city, using our tradition for planning. You might remember that in 1950 we have a regulator plan by Jose Luis Serra and Paul Wiener. So we have a tradition of more than 65 years of using planning procedures to understand what we have to, to do. Understanding the city, the cities are a cooperative tool with public private community contributions. The universities and NGOs has been a very powerful laboratories, uh, laboratories uh, as I have said before. We have developed the concept of co-responsibility as a community participatory and local democratic uh, development. And uh, we have developed this idea of cities for life that I have said before. So Medellin is uh, in some way a good example of how any city which leaves critical moments can superate that situation because we are not a powerful economical center, we are not in the middle of anything. We're just a peripheral city, not a capital, but we have been able to start, really start. To finalize this intervention and to contribute to the questions that Alejandro Saeda and Francisco Salin asked us, uh, I think when we talk about new modes for a concrete contribution uh, uh, to this, uh, I think we have to understand that we're living in a world of cities where most of the institutions are created, international institutions are created for countries. So in uh, thinking about this uh, international DNA, about cities and architecture could be very important to this world of cities. So I think the DNA could be an urban life for the promotion of participation, discussion uh, about policies and to find a way to be co-creative because many cities have solutions that other ones need. So we, as we can be look, look at in this uh, panel, you can understand that most of the problems are similar to anyone, to forensic. So we can use the Biennale for promoting economic cooperation and investment and to promote the participation of schools of architecture and urban urbanism as sitting living lives. We can connect the discipline to the urban metropolitan challenge, uh, 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 putting in front of us the urban metropolitan agenda, with discipline, interaction, and complexity. Building the public, society, space, and territories, and the Vinali as opportunity for the convergence of cities in search of a, of a specific values. City prices and the analysis are very common, but not together, architecture and urbanism. So strategies for collaborative work and cooperation uh, and specialized analysis for cities with cooperation could be a, a good opportunity. That's all. Thank you so much.